Okay, now it's live. And it's quick our talk time, everyone. Everyone, uh, welcome to the session 18. I'm here uh, again with my friend Darek and a special guest, Matthias Zamensky. We're going to talk about versatility, styles, art styles, design styles. Uh, I think uh, our friend Matthias here is the right person to talk about. He has been working on a variety of different projects, stylized projects, realistic ones. He did vehicle designs, landscape. He also does animation. This guy's a one-man army. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right. Um, the word is yours, Matthias. How are you doing? Hey, what's up, Maybe? guys? Hello. It's all good here. Thanks for asking. Thanks for the introduction. I'm super happy to be here with you guys. And yeah. Yeah, <laughs> man. Li likewise. Uh, just uh, maybe before we uh, we even like move on to the main topic, maybe we can just talk about your background. I'm pretty sure people who are watching us know you, but maybe if you can just introduce yourself, like how have you started? Because we sort of like all started at the same time. So we are just, we were just like yeah. newbies <laughs> and like, you know, growing together in like a group of like Polish, P Polish guys. And I, yeah. I definitely that think that, that there's like a good story behind it. So maybe you can elaborate on that. Uh, so we know, I, I know you Derek from, I think 2008 or seven, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's so, a, that was back in the days where it was like that uh, Polish forum board, right? Um, yeah, exactly. So we started on the Max 3D PAL. Mm -hmm. It was it was mainly the forum for uh, 3D guys, but it was like the sub forum for concept art and illustration. Mm -hmm. And we were like trying to do our best with with stuff we have, like sketchbook and 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 books we we found somewhere online. Mm -hmm. uh, and we try to grow together and yeah around 2010 uh, after finishing high school I went to uh, this one year course of 3D animation and um, what, what visual was, effects. What, what was the school? Well, I think this was like a dream, dream image something like that? Dream, yeah. dream imagine. It was like it was like this this projects from European Union Mm -hmm. So it was completely free for us. It was like this super intense course, like say six uh, days a week. Uh, op uh, the 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 lab lab was open from six a.m. to till twelve p.m. Mm -hmm. So you can just grind hard, you know. Mm -hmm. And and we will learn everything from production, from from concept art. To, to sculpting, rigging, animation, That's like awesome. tracking, VFX, all kinds of stuff. There was this really great teacher that come from from Canada. That mm -hmm. he he emigrated when he was a kid uh, from Poland, uh, Mariusz Korczak, and he with his parents emigrated to Canada and he learned uh, in Canada all all the, about the craft and he was working in in MPC ILM and stuff like that so mm -hmm. he was he was really versatile 3D animator and 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 he had some 2D animation backgrounds as well mm -hmm. so he was great teacher for us to to have him in there so yeah Go yeah, do, do you because I I think that you you sort of like get like very important knowledge back then like uh, you know you you had a grasp on different softwares like when we talk uh, in the forum or we talk like on you know Skype and you were like showing that you you guys do like um, sculpting and like 3D and back then we all were just doing you know 2D so for us it was a little bit different uh, like how do you feel it it helped you. Uh, because now I still feel like you are, you know, giving yourself a chance to learn a new software all the time. Now you, you, you do a lot of stuff in Blender, and that's yeah, I, that's yeah. really interesting to hear, like you know, your input on, on, on like learning new stuff and how did it help you from the very beginning learning technical aspects of your art. Um, yeah, because I was in uh, in in normal high school, so I didn't have any proper um uh, to the background like drawing was always hard for me 
and <clears throat> and yeah, um, when I was in, on this on this course, I learned a lot of different softwares like uh, After Effects, Premiere, Maya, and ZBrush, Matbox. It was like juggling all the softwares all the time. So so this gave me this this opportunity to to find the tools uh, as quickly as possible to, to to do stuff that I need to do for the assignments or for, for the job. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like not like not learning the, the whole software from A to Z, but only find those tools that I need to to, to finish the the work, you know? So mm -hmm. and after that, you when you're when you're starting to switch switch the softwares from one to the other, you 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 start to finding the patterns. Mm -hmm. uh, that some some options work similarly, and you are starting to building this momentum. Like uh, every so software is pretty much similar. So so it's it's really uh, after that you, it, it's really quickly to jump from one software to the other. Mm -hmm. So would you say the more softwares you learn, does that mean to you in your mind you find like, it's it's like I guess with languages, right? Like when people speak multiple yeah. languages, they are able to find words that are similar in different languages. So are you having the same with softwares? Is that what you're saying? Uh, I, I try to keep it broader. Like uh, we, we want to talk today about styles as well. So. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's 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 a it's a mindset uh, idea because with with styles it's pretty much the same. You have like this basic vocabulary like perspective, lighting, anatomy, form, all kinds of stuff. And and the difference between one style and the other is that you you take the uh, one one part of the of the fundamentals like form or shape design yeah and you you put the emphasis on it right and you mentioned very important aspect of like learning software that you just only learn the stuff that you think it might be useful or you know that it's gonna be useful for the production purposes and i guess this is the way of like efficient studying right because it's the same way when you draw and you can just you know spend all your life on like drawing different things at the same time and you will never have enough time to be to master all the topics right so you yeah, rather just you know get like um starting with the basics so you had a grasp of like anatomy composition you know values lighting and all sort of uh, you know um, elements and then you just pick up what's really what's really crucial for you. What's gonna be really um, the thing that you might find the most useful for your for your car career path, right? Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go on. Sorry. No, I just, I just, uh, <laughs> I just, uh, I just wanted to like know as much like from your beginnings because you know at at some point you made like a very a drastic change. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't even talk about the style itself, but also about the topics, because you you used mm -hmm. to do. We all used to do like all those like fantasy, sci-fi, you know, yeah. you know, illustrations, concepts, and and then you just start like digging more. Like, what was the input, or what was your inspiration to actually start grasping a new topics, and maybe how you can, uh, you know, find an inspiration. Maybe that would be a better question. How to find the inspiration to to extend your horizons, basically, and keep you excited, you know? Mm, I think I always be like that because when I was in high school, uh, I do all bunch of crazy things. Like I was juggling, I was like breathing fire, mm -hmm. <laughs> spinning, uh, spinning with fire, like uh, dragon. Like, <laughs> yeah, you have like, you, you had also predator hair, you know. Remember? Yeah, I also had dreadlocks. I, yeah, it was crazy, crazy time. I I draw all the time as well. Every just everything, uh, and not <laughs> learning in high school. You know, it was hard <laughs> time for me in terms of school. Um, but yeah, I was always interesting in 
all kinds of different stuff. So I, I feel like it's my blessing and the curse at the same time. And in terms of like uh, back in the days when we do all kinds of fantasy stuff and with switching styles for me, it was like um, when I was working, um, we were all doing the commercials or or concepts for 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 some some realistic stuff mm -hmm. and when i was going back to home and i was too tired to to do the same thing over and over again so i was just looking for something new something that will ignite the flame uh, in me to do to do more to learn more Mm -hmm. And yeah, does it also come from your imp being impatient? Because I guess like we as an art, we as an artist usually have that sort of like impatient nature. You know, you want to try different things. You, you you like jumping from project to you know one project to another one. You also are freelancing these days mostly. And so I guess like um you know at, at least for me personally it worked like you know because I was sort of like liking jumping to you know from project to project and at the same time you try different things and this might be because you force yourself to do and at the same time this might be because you want to learn new stuff right yeah yeah i mean we we lost uh, your face by the way we lost your face yeah yeah no you want to share can... something or you just you are ashamed of your face you shouldn't yeah, be. Yes. <laughs> you shouldn't. Face. You, you shouldn't be, man. It's like a nice, you know, uh, nice style, and uh, yeah. Go, should I just put something on, or yeah, or, can... or, or or maybe you wanna share your screen, or maybe we can just scroll through your works. Yeah, we can. Uh, we can yeah, scroll. for those of uh, for those of the people that are watching or didn't never hear about you or your name, uh, first of all, shame on you, of course. But yeah, I, I for one, am a big fan of uh, Zamensky's works. And by the way, it's Zamensky, all right? It's not Zameki, it's not Zabroki, it's Zamensky, all right? <laughs> yes. And, uh, <laughs> right? And um, just, you know, the, the like seeing you grow over the years when I saw you doing, for example, first in like, uh, the first time I met you was like 2014 and I, uh, yeah. Kind of really already fell in love with your works, and Thank what you. I wanted to ask in particular, what was uh, kind of guiding your evolution and your evolution in style? Because I remember you were uh, at first very painterly, if I'm correct, like you were mm -hmm. making yes. very like these this kinds of um, uh, Jamie Jones kinds of paintings with these amazing, energetic, nice controlled brush strokes. Then I remember you had your face of very realistic stuff, like matte painterly. And then I saw you doing more drawing, like you were like very honed, laser focused on just drawing skills. And then I saw you doing animation on top of that. Um, how was that guided? Is that like, and, and how would you advise other people approaching that, your, your journey basically? What was guiding you and, and how would you advise staying that curious and um. developing? like that i feel like um in the beginning it was like uh, because the the polish uh landscape in terms of work you know it's pretty narrow you don't have uh cartoony stuff that much if you have cartoon cartoons it's usually those are commercials about sausages or something like that <laughs> <laughs> so, so in the beginning, it was everything to get the job, to get uh, to the big clients, to have, to have, uh, you know, better financial financial condition, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And so, so it was like 2014 when we when we first met. It was some somewhere around that time. Uh, then I moved to freelance, so I tried to catch the clients from outside of Polish landscape, and um, and yeah, I I went to towards more realistic stuff because I I thought uh, it's it's good for for the clients basically. Yeah. And after a while, 
I was uh, I was kind of successful with 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 those uh, avenues, but uh, uh, avenues in, in the same... you mean you mean like workshops like when you I were mean like... Uh, like like the direction uh, towards mm-hmm. real realistic stuff, realistic uh, projects and, and oh, right, clients right. That, that are looking for uh, uh, realistic concepts. Yeah. So, so I was uh, in the same time I was working. I I, I start to. Sorry, guys. What happened? No, I just played your animation. It has sound on. So yeah, please continue. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. So in the same time when I was working with with those realistic clients again. I, I start I, I start to crave something different. I, I was kind of bored doing the same stuff over and over again. Right. And I start to do some more stylized uh, pieces. Um, and I was looking for basically I was looking for ways to improve. Mm-hmm. And 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 I was mixing and matching. Uh, sometimes I was doing the realistic stuff. Sometimes I was doing uh, more stylized pieces. Yeah. But yeah. after a while, people start to resonate more and more towards the uh, stylized pieces. So, uh, and probably I was more resonated too towards mm-hmm. them, you know? Because and is it- Sorry, but just a curious question. So you yeah. you keep on developing based on how your audience react, or is it a mixture between what you personally like and how the audience reacts to it? Um, I always um, try to develop towards my uh, my own taste and my own journey. Okay. Uh, I. I never try to please the crowd, to be honest. And that, um, and that's good actually, because you know, like we, you know, that's nothing, you know, more beautiful than doing your own stuff, and when people can appreciate it, right? But um, you, you, you talked about like that, that, uh, that, um, you know, stylized shift, and I just wanted mm-hmm. to ask, like, um, maybe just like, you know, one more time. It, was there like any particular moment that you just wanted to try that stylized thing because you wanted you you told us that you wanted to try new things, but why just mm-hmm. basically that you know there is like plenty of other stuff. I'm just curious, you know, was there like any input from you know outside or you know some some artist in particular that sort of like mm-hmm. inspired you to f- to follow this path? To be honest, I I don't really remember. Uh, for sure, what was the uh, what was the one particular thing that that uh, shift me towards more stylized pieces? Mm-hmm. Because I feel like since uh, since I was uh, in the in the scores uh, in Dreamagine, um, we were we were exposed to so many things. Uh, like we have this film class. And we were watching all kinds of stuff, uh, like super realistic uh, movies, like movies from 30s, uh, like German ex- expressionism, uh, anime from Japan, and all kinds of stuff. And in the end of this uh, this course, uh, the assignment was to create a short film. It's- wow. It's really garbage. It's somewhere in, in the internet. I will not give you the name. Why? But Come on. No way. We want to see but, your progress. But um, but this show me this. Uh, it it not it, it not need needs to be uh, realistic stuff all the time. And I feel like because we we, we don't have that much. Uh, animation driven industry in Poland mm. uh, I feel like it it was kind of hidden for me you know like you can do that for a living yeah. like like for many people concept art was like drawing for money was was hard, hard to believe 
that you can earn a living by it drawing. It still is, no? Like if you ask yeah, like, it a, is. like a so, middle-aged person right now and you have yeah. to explain what you do for a living, it's still very hard, right? Yeah, yeah. So on top of that, uh, you can imagine like you you telling your parents like, I want to, I don't know, direct, direct a feature animation or something like that when we are not having this kind of industry in Poland, you know? So yeah. you, you, you need to keep it real in some parts and, and you need to dream in other, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, yeah, I, and, I have the yeah. same. I know how it feels. Yeah. Mm. Nice. <laughs> okay, maybe maybe just uh, just like sort of like um, I don't know, like just taking this uh, conversation from from there, and you know, was there like any moment that you sort of like uh, you just break through to the industry, and then, for instance, you I don't know that like, you just prove that people or like your parents or like someone who just you know wanted to just you know tell told you told you that there is like no reason to do that or you had like support or like you know just just sort of like tell us about the background of that sort of stuff you know because i think that's mm -hmm. also really important if an artist who is like starting out has like you know any yeah. any any su uh, support at all or you just going mm -hmm. through the boundaries and like not giving a you know a goddamn fuck about like what other you know things and then when this breakthrough like now everyone opens their eyes and like oh oh this guy is mm -hmm. actually doing the thing right yeah yeah so i feel like nowadays it's it's a bit easier and harder in the same time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because uh first of all we have so much knowledge uh to learn from and if you're really uh mindful and, and smart about how to do that and maybe you can ask some of your sorry artist um uh, <clears throat> heroes about the journey mm -hmm. uh, i feel like in two years you can be uh an industry standard concept artist mm -hmm. uh, what, what, do you, what do you mean by that? Like, uh, can you explain what do you mean industry standard concept artist? Because, you know, like we we uh, we can sort of like gauge on that um, regarding the, the skills. I feel or like the... I feel like um, I feel like back in the days when we were starting out, there was no knowledge at, at all. So it was super hard. It was all about trial and error and asking other people how to do stuff. And nowadays there is so much knowledge that if you are smart and if you if you plan your uh, your moves or if you ask someone else to to plan it for you. So for example, like master classes or 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 your your school. Mm -hmm. Uh, I feel like it's 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 way easier to to gather uh, the skills required for for the uh, doing the work basically you know mm -hmm. yeah because there is like so much knowledge these days and as you said like when we were starting out there was like I think basically there was maybe mostly gnomes that sort of like were like yeah. super super expensive so. We of course had yeah, to use like true. a torrents or whatever, but <laughs> do uh, what you want because uh, pirate is free. Big, big, but you know now you have like so like you have just for you know two three five dollars you can have like all you know freaking free or for even us. free stuff. Yeah, on, even on free, YouTube, but like, at the same like, time yeah. you, you have like all the you know technical aspects for like couple bucks basically, and yeah. you can just basically learn what's needed and i i feel at the same time that the as you said it's easier but at the same time harder because people get like a sort of like the misconception of what is really needed is one thing and the other thing is like basically there's like too many um i i think copycats you know the people just copy mm -hmm. the, the same and over and over technique and it all looks the same at some point right so if you don't mm -hmm. really work upon your uh having your own sort of like style that resonates for your works or the subject or the way you you know sort of like paint or you know design it's sort of mm -hmm. like it's it's gonna be harder for you to to sort of like be stable and sustain actually in this industry right because it's it's gonna it's gonna catch you 
uh, at some point that you are just going on shortcuts or you are using uh, someone else's, uh, I don't know, like workflow or just approach. I, I don't know, like what, what's your opinion? But I, I just feel it's, it has like a two corners always, right? It's, it's, it's sort of like finding the golden, you know, middle spot for everything is, is a, the most important, the vital thing. I for for for, uh, for getting into and staying actually because getting into the job and having that one you know big job shot is one thing but staying in the industry and having uh and proving yourself i think we even talked about it before we started today's session like proving yourself and and staying on professional level for so many years is totally different thing yes i feel like yeah for for uh beginners who are starting out like copying other workflows it's enough to get the job uh, i feel like there's so many companies right now as, uh, in poland and in other uh, uh, countries like it's 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 i feel like it's way easier to to get the job nowadays mm -hmm. Uh, maybe I, I will I am wrong because uh, I'm not seeing this as clear because I'm working with other clients but but I see so many like those social games uh, companies that like sprout from nowhere you know mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and suddenly they are hiring like 600 people or something you know yeah mm -hmm. that happens now nowadays a lot the yeah, demand is growing yeah, so 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 i feel like for for beginners it's uh, it's easier to get the job and to start making connections and i i start uh, to be honest uh, myself i start uh, as a uh, swiss army knife basically because i start in this small game company uh, and i was working there for two years as a 3D artist, texture artist, animator, level designer, and rigger. Like I told you guys. So Mihal Mih was right, look, one man, yeah. one man army. <laughs> yeah, one man army. And, and I started building the connections and, you know, in the same time working on my concept art portfolio and trying to get the, the real concept art, uh, you know, uh, job. Mm -hmm. yeah. But but because of uh, because I had this uh, 3D animation VFX background from the school, mm -hmm. uh, it was easier for me to to get the job as a as a 3D guy, and not a concept artist. <clears throat> You, you you made our job easier today because now when we talk uh, I can just play your uh, your uh, time lapses it's it's amazing uh, just to you know have like some you know moving pictures on screen and so cool right. to see those um, those time lapses like any plans for you to to sort of like run like some courses or like you know some tutorials I think this is mm -hmm. you know this is something that uh, you know, I just find it interesting and I guess people who are watching us also might just, you know, ask those questions. And for those who are watching us, please make sure uh, to uh, also ask questions in the chat. Uh, we are um, happy to ask those questions to Matthias and hopefully he can answer them. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah, that is the reason why we're doing it live as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's uh, it's, it's a great benefit. Uh, but yeah, if there are no questions, then uh, it make me make me maybe state a comment slash question. Mm -hmm. um, very simple one. So um, we talked about, you know, your small journey, how you started off, uh, what kind of phases you went through with your styles, uh, the fact that you're a one man army, not with only with tools, but also the way how you execute concept art. Um, simple question, what is, what is your most favorite style to do? And what is the most demanded skill from the clients that you work with? Um, that's a hard one because uh, I feel like I'm evolving and, and try trying to look for ways. I feel like the style is a, is a byproduct of a bigger thing I, I'm thinking about mm -hmm. because I, I, I try to move from from I art directing and, and visual development towards uh, 
making my own thing. Like, I don't know what it will be, but it would be great if that would be uh, some kind of IP or, or, or short film or animation sort of. Nice. Uh, all, all those steps I, I take recently, like learning storyboards and, and animation are, are just part of the, of the bigger thing I, I'm thinking about constantly. Nice. So, so we might so see uh, Matka Zamensky Productions movie soon? Uh, probably somewhere in, in 10 years, maybe, would be great. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, we sounds will be exciting. The ones that will sounds cheering you, man. Always, yeah. always thinking big, right? Like we had to sort of like set up our goals because this is the way that we sort of can, you know, chase something, right? Even though yeah. it, it's like I don't like just planning things. I rather just want to just set the goal and see if I can just you know take it by steps, you know, like one yeah. step by step and you know where where it will guide you it's usually always changing because life is always changing and it's like you know yeah. fast forward moving and it's like always dynamic so this sort of stuff can but i i really you know wish you the best with that because i think Definitely. We, we all we all need to sort of like think big because it just keeps us excited right it just keeps us hyped yeah and keep us going i usually when i when i'm like in the eighty percent of of the thing uh, that thing I need to do, I, I I just start planning the next one. Just keep the momentum going. Yeah, mm -hmm. keep the hype um, going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That uh, might be a good tip for you know aspiring people out there. You know, don't don't stagnate. If you achieve something and you have that feeling of ah, oh, now I'm done with work. Now it feels good to relax. Sure, it is always good to relax, but keep the momentum going. Just what Matthias said. Uh, it's, it's very good. And I also see it with Derek right now, right? Like he he's been normally swamped with work. Now he has a little bit less, but now he creates his own stuff, right? Now he creates his own project. Now he has time to do to finish stuff that he didn't uh, have time to finish, and that's yeah. always very inspiring. And uh, it's it's good to hear that you're doing the same uh, as well, Matthias. Like, and I've been seeing it. Like, your presence online is very very strong. Mm -hmm. And you're pumping out works like crazy all the time in different mm -hmm. styles, from landscapes to characters, sketches, animation. It's uh, it's very inspiring. Very inspiring. Thanks. <clears throat> uh, to be honest, I feel like uh, I work so many. Uh, I mean, I don't want to brag about it. It's not about. Please do. It. But uh, uh, in the past three years, I work with in uh, with so many clients that uh, after a while, I realize it's uh, I, I I I need my own thing. It's it's always be about them. Like it it was it will be always uh, a film of someone, you know. Exactly. And mm -hmm. and I and I need something tangible. Uh, it's hard to say, but you, you just need your own baby, basically, your... right? It's like your baby yeah. that you can just take care of. Yeah. Because yeah. I think yes. we all are just working. And again, like it's nothing to complain about because it's an amazing job in the end of the day. But at the same time, yeah. you as an artist, you need sort of like express yourself, not just because someone tell you to do and they just pay you for that. Because in the end of the day, you end up having, of course, some money in your account, but losing your project, you're losing your identity, right? Because you are basically selling the idea, selling the look, selling your your work, selling your concept designs yeah. and, you know, illustrations, what's not. And in the end of the day, it doesn't belong to you. And you cannot even sort of like elaborate on that because for instance, you have such an exciting project and you just feel the hunger to do something along those lines, but you know that you can't really expand that universum uh, like one to one because you are under NDA and this is not gonna be your project anyway, right? So this yeah. is something that we all need, like, you know, having this sort of like a uh, old little baby that we can treat on the side. And I guess like, um, like I've seen with Mikhail, for instance, he was doing that for so many years, like developing his own IP. 
and I guess when when there's like a chance and I just you know told myself the same that when when there's a chance um, during this year and I don't know if it's gonna be if it was just co um, coincidence but uh, you know with all that virus thing I actually have like a you know more chance to you know to develop own stuff and I sort of appreciate it right because for you know three four five years when we've been uh, professionals we actually didn't have much you know chance to do that and there was always something right and they only has like 24 hours so yeah that's true I feel like um, um, when you are working for a long time it's it's it start to like maybe not eating you from the inside but you have this urge to 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 do something on uh, on your own and and try to to be better and yeah because and you know in. because they sort of like hire you because of your expertise right and it's... you know sometimes it's good when you have a project and you can you can even like force yourself to to do the stuff that's sort of like easy for you but try to you know catch it from different perspective or take it from different angle with different tools and then you can just sort of like um, you know learn new stuff so you use basically the work to learn new stuff and i i used i used to do that all, all my life basically to just try new things mm -hmm. but i guess at the same time it's it's nothing compare compares you to, to you know to doing your stuff for yourself and you can spend like two three four weeks on one piece and you'll of course never be happy but you can perfect that much more than just having a concept for client that you have to just you know spam within one or two days right yeah, especially like it. It will be. Uh, it never will be uh, one hundred percent of your idea. Mm -hmm. Even if you if you create something that you are super happy, there will be always some kind yeah, of that is, uh, that is one of changes and suggestions and stuff like that, which is good thing because they are like they are uh, running the team and they have their own vision and you are just a part of the team and, and they are paying for this but uh, it's good to have your own projects to 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 um to work on your stuff mm -hmm. exactly yeah very good advice i think that kind of advice might be like um suggested for like artists that are already financially stable because yeah we might sound like we're bragging like yeah just be an artist do what you want but of course it is important to to work towards what is first demanded from the industry so you can establish yourself uh, yeah. pretty well financially so you have a comfortable life and then you have the luxury like like matthias and Derek to like start thinking all right you know now that i establish myself i worked four or five years mainly for clients I want more, I want to express a little bit more. And it doesn't sound selfish at all, because in the end, if you take time to like, let's say you take a year off of work completely, you establish yourself financially, you can afford to do a work only stuff for yourself. In the end, you learn new skills, you learn new styles, and that as well will reflect on uh, better client work in the future if you would you know, want to go back uh, and, and work for clients again. So on the long run, everyone benefits from it, I believe. Uh, to be honest, from my side, mm -hmm. uh, I never, maybe in the recent year or two, but before, I never get a job after a client work. It was always after people seeing my own personal stuff. So I think that that's, that, that, that's similar situation with all of us, yeah. you know, like because because we, you know, it's and I, it might not be ironic. I think it's because you are basically trying new grants, as we were discussing. You are trying new things, and you know, we sort of like recommend it to to our students. And like, you know, when you try new things, when you basically, you know, l develop your skills, when you learn, and you you just put your ego to to the pocket, and you basically learn new stuff, you are becoming a much more um, 
you know valuable uh, asset on the market you know in the end of the day and even though when you when you have established brand or your name is you know there in the industry you you can sort of like you know try new things to sort of like make you even more um i don't know like precious precious you know so um that's probably why because we try new things by doing personal stuff right yeah, yeah. I agree on that. It's it's a very good point. Also, what Matthias said. Uh, same here. I am. There is it happens rarely, like you said, with me that a client picks you up based on previous works that you've done by a client. Like most of the time, you're not even allowed to show it. So yeah, that yeah. is why that is why it is important to keep on working on your own stuff. So you're that's always like, that's, able to. Yeah. Uh -huh, yes. Sorry. Okay. That's why I like to work on commercials and cinematics because they are like they are pumping so much of this, so they are going after two three months. So so you can show it faster. Yes, sure, you right. can show it faster yeah. rather than some kind of game that that is developing like two three four years yeah for thousands and, of years and you are ashamed <laughs> after four years of the stuff you did four years ago because you grow so much yeah you well don't, most of the time you don't even want to yeah. show it anymore <laughs> yeah or you can yeah exactly uh there is there is like some really cool um bunch of questions emerging uh in the chat so I would like to maybe uh, pick up um, the first one that I that I uh, of course um, gonna ask to to Matthias. Um, it's something that uh, is uh, is sort of like re relating to all of us, but I guess it's uh, let's let Matthias first uh, answer that, and maybe Mikkel, you wanna add something later on to that, and maybe I will just give a conclusion. But as a freelancer, how do you care about good relationships with customers and how do you acquire new ones? Like we sort of like cover that, you know, you, you get like a lot of job because of your personal piece. But yeah, mm -hmm. let's, let's, uh, let's talk about this one because I think like how to sustain like a good, con uh, good contact sure. and good relationship is really more about your personality and your professional part of, you know, not only we, not only we have to do the work, we also have to be professional we have to go from the business side as well, right? So in my case, uh, there is not a happy story, <laughs> to be honest, mm -hmm. because in, um, after working in the, um, one of the co commercial company, um, I was fired after like two years uh, because there was too many concept artists in the team. So uh, after that, I, I basically sent around 600 emails uh, to various art directors and producers uh, that I found online. Mm -hmm. And from that, maybe 20% uh, of the people uh, answer. And from that, like 10% uh a conversation move forward mm -hmm. and maybe after that like i start working with six of them so so it's one like in a hundred one. not bad yeah yeah you <laughs> exactly you still but, succeeded uh, right you still succeeded yeah but so. after, but those six clients were enough to like keep the ball rolling and the the b biggest thing is to for for the people that uh, are starting out and want to freelance mm -hmm. is to build the connections and and going to the festivals and going uh, to linkedin and looking for the people uh, uh, that are aligned uh, with the art style they are making so if you are if you are doing cartoon or stylized pieces, you are looking for uh, stylized art directors and you basically are building the connections like sending them a friendly email. Um, if you need someone to help uh, in your project or something like that, uh, it would be great to work under your command or something like that. You know? <laughs> nice. 
I am here for your command, your wishes. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, and also like uh, adding the images in the attachments of the email because people are, are super lazy and if you if you don't catch their attention right away uh, they will just close the email or put it into spam and there is like a bigger bigger chance if you if you attach uh, some images mm -hmm. to your to, to the email because if they saw a cool image they will yeah. stop and read the email but if there is like only text Right. Be like, ah, uh, I don't have time for this. Listen, and all... listen, people, that's a smart advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's it is better to attach of, in... That's the advice of a person that was, you know, that's, that's was looking for a job card. <laughs> Yeah. But you made it, nice. man. Like no matter how you made it, like we all had like different stories, and 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 of sort course. of like um and sort of like it it paid off, right? You just have to sort of like not only sacrifice, you also have to be uh, stubborn. You have to believe yeah. in yeah. what you do. Yeah. You have to really push yourself to the limits, not only because of an art, but also just to show off like you know uh, to show yeah, off uh, you, that you are worth it you know and then when you when you when you get a job you of course have to prove your your uh your professionalism you have to prove your yeah. skills and you know like this also goes to the to the first part of the question how do you uh how do you care and how do you sustain a good relationship with your client because you know sometimes the clients are like they go by they go away you know they just you, you do some job and you know oh. if you do a good job they usually come back but there are specific you know aspects of work or maybe specific tasks that someone just give you and then may, they might not need an extra help anymore but this is, if yeah. you if you just care about the relation it's like a friendship basically right yeah i feel like there is like a simple uh solution for that and it's uh under promise and over deliver basically exactly very good uh, very good point so say them like it will take three days to do that and deliver in one <laughs> or yeah. something like that or or deliver something that we, that they like don't expect mm -hmm. or like deliver three versions one uh, it will be something that they want uh, something that you think he, they want and mm -hmm. one version that is completely out of the blue you know like like super crazy you know like something something that they don't expect you know yeah you know just just want to sell a bit of yourself and how would you you know tackle this you know concept or exploration just to show them something extra is definitely a good thing because they will always remember like oh this guy had like that extra ideas that sort of like you know gave us new ideas as well because it's it's sort of like of the uh of that of that uh the brief that we gave him right so this is something um that i think is very uh, also important to note down just basically being um, being unique to them, right? However, yeah. that, however that sounds, we have to we have to be somehow unique to to get a job and to stay uh, relevant to the clients, right? Yeah, the 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 uniqueness is cool, but I feel like the the most important thing is to be uh, helpful for for production. Definitely, so, yeah, yeah. And so if they want like the the layout or uh, or concept of the environment, uh, sometimes they people because I I work mostly I'm doing mostly backgrounds and stuff. Mm -hmm. People uh, usually clients think old way, so like drone layout uh, after the storyboards and and then background or something like that. And I usually try to send them like 3D rough renders or or match the the camera from the uh, from the storyboards to 3D. Do, do you have maybe some example that you want to share? Like uh, uh, 
share your I'm screen sure. and maybe just show like I don't know. I'm something not sure that... if I have any uh, examples from that, but uh, I, I tried. NDA, oh, yeah, okay. guys. And yeah, yeah, I, I I found it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. So so let me share. Let me switch the screen to yours. Um, if you just share your screen, it's gonna pop out. And then maybe we can also show a little bit of your animation process. Uh, I think that's something that's super fresh. And yes. I guess uh, that would be awesome to see. I mean, there is not much of, about animation, but we can talk about Blender a bit. Yeah. Uh, so with this project, uh, I had like this uh, um, sci-fi Akira slash Truon uh background to do mm -hmm. you know and mostly it's it's a stadium and city behind so i i kid bash bunch of buildings and and stadium uh, to to save the time for the production and they were really happy with the results because uh, they thought i will paint every background from scratch you know Mm -hmm. Nice. And the client here was Nike? Uh, the client was the Golden Wolves. I, I, I work with them. Uh, uh -huh. I see. Uh, but so it ended up being for Nike, right? Because... Yeah, the commercial was for Nike, but the, the client was Golden Wolf. I, I do a bunch of things with them. I did this crazy commercial with golf superheroes. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> We 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 show the the golf uh, could be fun, <laughs> kind of. You try to make it look fun. Yeah, we try nice. to make it look fun. So this is this was a really yeah. crazy background. The scenery it's, looks very inviting. Yeah, it the looks... clouds. Are you like painting those clouds, or is it like this is like the paint slash photo bash nice. from yeah, HDRI. Yeah, here is very the. Nice full commercial it's quick so it's 40 seconds so is, is, is that for a video game no it's mm -hmm. like it's this sport uh, channel in uk called ah. sky sport and they are transmitting i think the 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 golf matches i don't know if, if you call that matches uh, golf matches i don't know tournaments i don't know tournaments yeah probably tournaments yeah so awesome. I, I, I like how the, the, the like backgrounds in this in this commercial, yeah, and nice. the colors. Yeah, it's fun. I really like those 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 short short projects. Well, it looks like a lot of work. I can tell you that it doesn't yeah. look short at all. All these. So you drew all the characters. You animated. Them, no, no, you no. I only background. did backgrounds and ah, okay. guys from Golden Wolf did the the, the animation and. Uh -huh. uh, and the uh, post-production. I see. And I, I did see. the color script and, and a bit of uh, style frames. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the beginning. Those are like paintings over the, the storyboards, basically. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And how long does a project like that last on average? I would say like two, three months. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, nice. so those are pretty, pretty fast projects. Yeah. Very cool. As you can see, guys, uh, I, I know there is a little delay, but now seeing uh, uh, Samensky's portfolio, it is it is a beautiful arsenal. You know, drawing skills, painting skills, animation skills, Thank and you. then also also executed in a, in a in a variety of, of styles. So yeah, um, d is there anything you would like to cover? Because we have questions uh, that we yeah. Can let's let's go see how much to. time do we have? Like um, maybe. Matthias, how much time do you have for us? Uh, I think we can go for a while. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let, let's let's maybe let's maybe uh, let's maybe uh, go through um, that animation that you showed uh, showed me last time. Um, if you want to mm -hmm. just show some. Blender goodies and how you sort of like utilize that workflow in your um, in your professional work as well because you know like you moved on to animating a lot of stuff for yourself mm -hmm. and then it it looks like it's just part of your job as well right these days. Yeah, give me a second. So I, I recently did this 
uh, kind of six fan arts that are that is going around on the on the Instagram. I I, I thought it would be good uh, excuse to to do something different with it. Mm-hmm. Nice. I really uh, like this one. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, I. I I really I I want to try try it with with uh, with Blender because I I didn't have much time recently because of the of the work but after uh, like two or three uh, weeks ago I I had a free slot of of time to to do something and uh, so it's really fun because they add this uh, great tool, the Grease Pencil in uh, 2.8, I think. And it's like basically a 2D slash 3D tool, which is perfect for me because I was always somewhere in the middle, like mm-hmm. not knowing the 3D, uh, like super, uh, you know, and and the same goes with 2D, mm-hmm. so it was like perfect match for me to do that. Golden uh, spot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So with this, uh, basically, this tool allows you to to animate 2D objects in 3D, which is perfect for for storyboarding, for 2D animation, for 3D animation as well, because recently. Uh, there is a lot of those commercials like uh, basketball player jumps to, uh, I mean, baseball player, you know, basketball player <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, jumps to with the with the ball and hit the hit the score. And there is like fire in 2D and stuff like that. So there's yeah. like this this combination of 2D and real footage and, and 3D animation. So so I feel it it will be good for production, but but with this fan art, uh, there is like this really cool thing because you can use shapes as a masks. Mm-hmm. So here I have this uh, rectangular mask, and when I hide it, ah, nice. you will yeah. see the the rest. So it, there is it, so much it more. There is so let's works. See, it feels like a waste. Yeah, I mean it's not a waste because it's like a copy paste of the objects basically. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So if you give me a second, I will look for the layers. So you have like those two D two D objects. Nice. But it's better than than Photoshop object because they are like based on polygons basically. So they are not losing the quality like bitmaps. So you basically mm-hmm. sketch it out first in Blender. Yeah, and you then... can sketch it out in in three D, and you can duplicate and reuse them, and so it's super powerful. Nice. And uh, the mask works as a window, basically, mm-hmm. to to the illustration. So and cool idea! Can... So cool idea! I really like the way that it's just basically so simple. Yet it looks like, you know, nice, you know, elaborate yeah. animation. Yeah, it, it puts you there in the scene when you kind of like rotate, you know, and there's yeah. like some... Yeah. Yeah, so for example, looks... here, yeah, so for example, here I, I used the, the same trees I, I used see. here. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay. Just a different Just grading, like different yeah. color and... Yeah. yeah, and for example, this ground plane uh was drawn from the top view basically and you can switch the the perspective and it feels mm. like uh like a drone in in the perspective basically so you can use like uh, the 3d tools uh and, and the, the stuff that 3d provides and 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 use it into to the animation basically nice and how did you how did you do the rain the rain are just like uh, drawn scribbles, like, mm-hmm. and then move in the space, as you see. So you can like take one point, like where is the rain? Well, I so can hear, can I can hear, I can hear the echo of like, Mihal, are you typing on the keyboard? No, I'm not. 
Yeah, let's start. I hear like some really big echo, but uh, give me a second. I will go to to the toilet and I'll be back in a, in a few. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no worries, man. We'll wait here. I'm wondering how he did the glow to the rain as well. Is uh, it like is, is every? It... I'm I'm curious if you can like paint that as well in Blender, or did he like actually add a light source to that raindrop? Mm. I don't know, like maybe, I, don't know. I, I don't know Blender at all, so I don't I, I don't want to just comment. But yeah, let's let's maybe um uh let's maybe have a quick chat here because uh, Michal um we have um plenty of questions and maybe do, yeah. uh, is there is like anyone that you you would like to take over? Maybe just you know answer, maybe something that we missed or something that we should yes. mention. Well, not in a particular order, but I see here a good question that I was just, I was reading in my mind while listening to you guys, and I think it's a good question uh, mm -hmm. by Karolina Urbańczyk. We'll try to cover the rest as well. Sorry, guys, if I'm like picking the first one that I see, but here is a good question, and she says, when you're working so much on your skills or developing on your own brand, you need a lot of time. That's right. Do you sacrifice your personal life for work, fashion, or somehow manage to balance it? So I think she was directing it to uh, Zamensky, uh, of course, but I think you, Derek, are as well like a good example. So let him have his toilet time, and then you can maybe answer that question uh, for <laughs> yeah, her. How um... you, because in the end, you have a wife, you have friends, you have family. How do you balance it out? And you also have your own brand. You also work for clients like crazy. Uh, the school too takes a lot of time, right? Totally. So... Yeah, yeah. That's a very, very good question. I guess this is uh, this, you know, this sort of like work is like any any other work that sort of like requires a sacrifice from you in order to achieve success, right? Or to achieve, you know, uh, like what is success basically, right? Is for for me, it's 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 never enough. So rather, um, just constantly chasing. Uh, little goals or or the bigger scope of goals uh, and then and then of course the sacrifice comes a long way uh, you know you I screwed up a lot of uh, things in my life regarding that and like you know personal life and relationships and you know um, even health and you know it's basically if you do what you love you don't really look at it as your job right and of course we have to be we have to be conscious we have to be aware we have to we have to take care of uh, our life in a way that it's not only just work 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 but basically you have to understand that this job if you are really passionate about it you basically have like uh it's it's 24 hour uh a day job it's not even i wouldn't even like to call it job it's more like a passion that you just develop on so many different uh, grounds and you get paid for it you do uh, the stuff for yourself you do the stuff to uh, to mm. sort of like express yourself to express your uh, artistics uh, express your feelings emotions and yeah of course in the end of the day you have to be uh, you have to be a grown-up man and take care of your uh, of your of your family and that's what we also aim to do um, but at the same time a lot of sacrifice came um, uh, along the way and, and especially when you are freelancing and you work on like multiple projects at the same time you really want to build the you know the brand that's um, that's uh, that brings you a lot of work brings a lot of clients and on mm -hmm. top of that when we do the school or teaching or you know personal stuff it's only adds up hours of our life to to continue doing creative stuff so it's basically like uh yeah it's basically like a never-ending story <laughs> but so far uh so good and as long as we can do that um as long as i can do that i'm gonna i'm gonna keep up with that so uh but yeah um it also comes and uh, the situation when you have to sort of like you know um take a little bit more rest um you know value what's really important because it's not only about money and work and it's also about like being happy and being successful in some field or specific job as we do is not only it doesn't mean that you have you you're happy at all right you have to make yourself uh happy 
in a way that you on, not only do what you like, but at the same time, you also, you also spend the quality time resting and, you know, being surrounded by people who, who loves you and who, uh, who are your, uh, your support basically. Right. Yeah. Very elaborated answer. Thanks for that. It's very important. And how and... about you? Like, uh, maybe Mikal, you can quickly take over that. And then we're going to ask the same to Matthias, because I think this is pretty, pretty, uh, Pretty uh, yeah, I'm import, back. <laughs> import, yeah, I know. A pretty important uh, question in the end of yeah, the day. Yeah, so so Zamensky is back from his toilet break. Um, we're not is commenting it? on that, of course. It might have been diarrhea. It might have been. Oh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> so uh, we are talking, uh, Matthias, about um, someone asked a question. Uh, Karina, yeah, I saw that, of course. Yeah, you need a lot of time to sacrifice your personal life, work on your brand passion, and, and you all have that, right? You build up your brand, you're working on your passion, you're very versatile, you have a, a set amount of clients. But obviously, I can see you also living, uh, I think, a relatively nice, healthy social life, right? You have a wife, you have family, um, you have yeah. friends. And um, so we we're going to talk about uh, that a little bit. My view on it is exactly the same, how, how Derek said it. Plus, on top of that, I really have to stress upon the fact that if your goal is to be happy in life, that it's, that's a very futile exercise. You will never reach a state where you ever will be happy. Uh, there is this book by uh, Jordan Peterson that I really recommend to everyone, 12 can, Rules of Life. Can you maybe post and, it to the chat as well? Or maybe I can just uh, Google that. Yeah, it's a really yeah, good book could, I was reading. It's, it yeah. Too. It's it's a yeah it's a very popular book it's one of the best sellers and he speaks there about happiness if happiness is really your true desire then guess what if you're really going to do like let's for example you're in a relationship right or you or no, well let's not talk about relationships well, let's just talk about work let's say you have a moment in time in your career that you're not happy about concept art something is frustrating you well that doesn't make you happy right so what does it mean that you quit that you just stop doing it. Mm -hmm. No, despite of the fact that it is a lot of work and a lot of uh, and it requires a lot of discipline and perseverance, you will still pull through. Let's say there is a skill within concept art that you don't like as much, like learning 3D, for example, right? Because mm -hmm. you are about, you know, painting, drawing and nice lighting effects. But you need nowadays you need that technical knowledge to keep up what you're just going to quit because it doesn't make you happy. Right. So um reward yourself like that that there will be always moments of pain you know there will always will be some of your friends family that will be down that will be sick and and that is why um uh, if we can accept that happiness is kind of unreachable you know we can still make the most out of it then at the same time we can focus on really being uh, the best version of ourselves and that is uh that motivates me and I know it motivates, for example, Derek, when I see him at work, you know, he's never fully happy. Even also with, when I'm done with my own work and I look back at it, it doesn't make me happy. I want more, right? I'm never, if I was happy, I would probably just stop working. It's like, yeah, I'm good. It's fine. You know, I've done so many works already. It's good. But no, I look back always at my last work and I see things that not make me happy, things that I always want to improve. Um, so yeah yeah very very beautiful set and maybe just uh, before uh before what Matthias, about you uh, Matthias? yeah yeah just maybe before he take over i i think we can also compare that to um to to, to being uh smart <laughs> i i know however it sounds but <laughs> you can learn all your life uh you just you can level up on so many grounds but you will never be smart you know, you'll never be like fully smart. You'll never be the yeah. the most smart person. Uh, you basically can be less stupid. <laughs> it's the same with like happiness, right? You just can be um, less sad or, you know, like you can make your life much more better quality. But as Michael beautifully said uh, and put it in words, it's not going to be okay. like you all, your life will always be a hundred percent smooth because you might fuck up your relationships. You might fuck up your friendships. You might fuck up your health or something just that can happen around you. And yeah, that's, out of your control, right? That, like that, this pandemic, you know? Everything, exactly. So many all things. Our plans exactly. Apart. And so many things are actually out of our control. So yeah, let's yeah. Uh, let maybe uh, Matthias um, give a conclusion to that. What's your <laughs> point on? <laughs> what is my point? 
Uh, the question was because we, I feel like we detour a bit uh, with it. The question was uh, when you are so working so much on your skills or developing your own brand, you need a lot of time. Do you sacrifice your personal life for your work passion or somehow manage to balance? Basically, it? in short, are you happy with your life? Are you happy? I'm not sure it, it, it's 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 the it's the short version, but I, I try to answer as 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 uh, as clear as as I can. Yeah, go ahead. So in the beginning, I was grinding like super hard to get work and to to get my skills better, and I sacrifice health uh, to do that because I eat junk food and my back and my wrist are were in a lot of trouble mm -hmm. and after a while I try to exercise and eat better because uh, suddenly I realize I'm not a robot that can work like 16 hours a day yeah and and when I start to uh, working out, I, I feel like I sac I start to sacrificing my relationships somehow. But because uh, I have this beautiful woman uh, near my my side, uh, which is smarter than me in so many ways, uh, especially emotionally, like her. Uh, emotional intelligence is like over 9000 <laughs> <laughs> so basically she she teach me how to be a human being and not a fucking <laughs> art robot that draw 24/7 and you know so it was a hard work and <laughs> <laughs> I'm i hope it's paying off karina yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, um, and nowadays I feel like I finally found the balance, and and I try to stick to uh, to the sh schedule that I made for myself, and and I try to get some rest, <laughs> yeah. which which can sound silly, but uh, when you are perfectionist and you are trying to push yourself uh, through the limits it's uh, sometimes you are around you are going around the circle and you are unhappy and you are trying to grind through the unhappiness you know mm -hmm. so uh, and it, it don't work that well <laughs> to be honest so yeah it's i feel like it's it's about finding a balance nice and do you wish you had that balance from the start or are you saying like well i spent three or four years on like a uh, nightmare mode uh you know being a concept art robot working 16 hours a day do you think that was still necessary to achieve the the amount of, of success and skill that you have right now or would you advise all right guys uh, just take it balance from the start uh, uh, what, what it's advice? hard to you say think? because all the our paths are different and exactly, the circumstances yeah. are different so it's hard to say how, how it would be if I take a different route mm -hmm. maybe I will not be in the same place where I am now Maybe I'll be in a different place, but um, uh, the one thing I, I, I'm sure about is that I'm I don't regret the, the choices I made, mm -hmm. uh, and and I, I try to be mindful about my future, and yeah. and, and I, I I try to find the time to to just think about it. Because sometimes when you are like going through uh, your work and you, basically your life, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you are forgetting about just thinking about uh, to think uh, yeah. <laughs> because life is going on, you know? Oh, yeah. exactly. 
it's yeah. dynamically changing always right and as as we mentioned not once today that like it's a lot of things are happening without our control and you have to face it basically right when you face it yeah. you can overcome a lot of obstacles i can tell myself but uh but yeah uh, i think having also a positive attitude is also really important and be positive in general right like be uh be a nice person it definitely helping you a lot in your life you know just just go through a lot of things to to meet new people and to basically surround yourself with trusted people right this is something that that yeah. just comes with you being you be being open on on a lot of things and 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 as a, at the same time building that trust with time we build the trust for instance um with Michael for years and without even planning that right and a lot of things are happening uh, again without the control because you don't plan it and sometimes you can let those things happen right exactly and, and just yeah. let the flow goes you know so yeah and um and what are you doing right now <laughs> yeah show us you know this is very i mean you're like what is it like some kind of uh ghost what is it, like some I kind know, of sp sp sperm cell away. running away um where are the ghostbusters in... where are the ghostbusters yeah. there are like those questions over over the youtube comments about like did you draw this in blender yeah and yes so you can draw in blender which is kind of cool and i was like trying to do a simple animation with it and it's really cool because you can add the the noise modifier the effects right and, and it's it looks like you are animating all those frames yeah i mean right now it looks silly because it it goes into this weird triangle or path that i made but um, it's fine man it looks like it's... triple a content to me yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, no uh, but, yeah, yeah this it's, is it's it's really cool because you can like populate the scene and like offset the the frames of the of the ghosts and they will look a nice, bit nice. different all the time or not <laughs> yeah very so cool. Very yeah, I'm I'm yeah. I'm following now this. Uh, I'm on a class with uh, Van Ling from Heavy Body. So if you, if you're serious about learning Blender, uh, I totally recommend his class. Um, very powerful software. I really love uh, well the fact that it's free, of course. Um, <laughs> you can download it and everything like everything like the live balloons, the live modifiers. Everything is live. Like it it creates so much freedom when you're going to to build something in 3d right it is uh, extremely powerful and the fact that ev is a real-time renderer you can just have like a like a, you can just model inside of the renderer without any wait time no noise no nothing extremely mm -hmm. powerful um it has its downsides like every software like when i compare it to moto but uh you can not cannot just ignore the strength of, uh, of Blender. And even the fact you can like draw, you know, and turn it into 3D and all that yeah, stuff. It's I just, feel yeah. Like, I feel like this 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 3D, uh, 2D combination is super powerful, especially when you are like designing things because you can draw over the surface. Mm -hmm. So for example, when you are like, when you are like designing, uh, for example, let's say this cube is a uh, vehicle. <laughs> mm -hmm. Try to imagine a tank. <laughs> you can like draw over, yeah, like a tank. You can you draw can... over the yeah the face geometry. the face in perfect. And it will yeah. stick to to the geometry. And then you are you are switching to the origin and view, and you let's say you want the fucking uh, canyon. I'm sorry, but it seems like my neighbors are having a party. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but 
No, no I, I don't. That's all right. Oh, okay. But it's ghetto time. So it's Saturday yeah. evening <laughs> in Poland, man. It's like everyone is under quarantine. So what do you expect? <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. Look at this. Look at this magic, guys. 2D and 3D joining, joining force. Is this a tank, by the way? Beautiful. Yeah. Like yes. You like design? Or yes. What? This is the next. Yes. I will steal that design from you. Sorry, it's just too good. <laughs> the best artist still, right? <laughs> exactly. So yeah, you can plan in Powerful. the sketching phase and yeah. you can then like... You can scale it. Oh man, yeah, thanks for showing that. Yeah, like, I, I, can... I still don't know how to do those shortcuts and everything, but uh, yeah. It's... And then you can like model the the part of of the... that you like, you know, like... Yeah. It's a good combination, I guess. Like I'm not, I'm not gonna, not gonna lie. Definitely gonna try that as well. Yeah. Just because you know, like learning uh, and at the same time uh, teaching in you know students at school is gonna be much more efficient. You know, if you do that through uh, free and open open source software. So yeah. Uh, when you draw uh, like that, Matthias, uh, is it? Is it lagging because of the screen share, or is it, uh, or is, is is the drawing in Blender as smooth as as in a two D software, or is there a li little bit of jet lag? No lag at all. I okay. feel like it's, it's because of the streaming. I see. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. That's, I'm just want to assure that and to let everyone know that it is smooth. You can just draw. You can <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Spread the yeah. propaganda. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's. Uh, and you know, if you can support the Blender guys, then also do it, you know, I think they deserve, you know, if like every concept artist that uses it, just like donate 10 bucks even, then, you know, I, it's, it's a beautiful thing, you know, it is, uh, it's so strong. It's really strong. Like, I mean, it's still just a tool, all other, you know, I'm not saying like, oh, Blender is now the way. No, it's, it's just, a, it's just another strong tool, right? Yeah. I know, for example, Derek is uh, using, you know, 3ds Max combined with Octane and the shit he makes there is also unbelievable. So it really comes down to your personal liking and everything. Um, I switched to Blender from Moto because um, I just didn't like how the new Moto changed so much. A lot of stuff were not by default in there. The shortcuts changed. Um, I needed to download plugins to be able to do live booleans. And I thought, well, I'll just try Blender because everything is in there in, in one place. You download it, done, right? You have the renderer, you have yeah. Cycles renderer, <laughs> you have the EV renderer. Um, super powerful, yeah. Do oh, you I need thought... a pretty powerful PC to work in Blender? Um, no, actually, no. The first time I used Blender was last summer for an assignment. And I was modeling on the fly in Eevee on a laptop. And my yeah, you're laptop using laptop, laptop, right? That the yeah. one that we use for for school. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's it's not a bad laptop. It's like an i7 eighth generation, blah blah blah. blah. Um, but its video card, its GPU is it's like a standard Nvidia a mobile uh, M -MX chipset. Some for, um, MX something. Yes, like that, so. exactly. So you don't need even a strong PC to to even like block something out very fast and like view the lighting in it, you know, because EV is just, just magic, basically no waiting time. You just turn it on boom. Right. So, yeah. 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 Um, okay. We, we are like almost meeting like in one and a half hour. Um, maybe yeah. we, we can, uh, maybe we can ask like some final questions to Matthias. If someone wants to ask like one final question, please post it now. I'm just going to pick up one uh from the previous ones that i think uh, is interesting because it's gonna it's gonna basically uh be associated with what's going on uh today and basically these days so um or actually no actually i'm gonna switch my focus i actually find a even better one uh matthias listen how important is to have a <laughs> how important is to have a, a mentor for you? How would you uh, how would someone go about finding one if they live where they where there is no industry? I think basically there is like doesn't really matter when you live, but at the same time, mm -hmm. if you can 
yeah if you can answer this one regarding the mentor and finding them like how did you have any how did you if so how did you find them i feel like more important than a finding mentor is to find uh like-minded friends uh that doing the same thing uh -huh. uh, what you do like you and me yeah and, and michal and Wojtek, we we start from the similar place and starting from the bottom <laughs> yeah and we grow through the years and and we grow as an artist and 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 our friendship grow in the same time yeah so um so i feel like Finding mentor is is beneficial, but usually it will uh, it will be financially. Uh, you know, you need to pay for it basically, mm -hmm. and it's usually like eight uh, weeks or something like that. But finding uh, friends that will push you and and help you. Um, it's it's priceless mm -hmm. yeah i think uh, very well said I, definitely i think we can all agree because uh having a like like a minded person and friends uh, in the industry is definitely pushing yourself you know towards like like breaking the boundaries in in a way that you know just having a trust friends that will just gonna you know bash you about things is even more important, right? When when we uh, are um, you know sharing each other works, and I know I can I can rely on the on your opinion, like uh, honestly. If something sucks, it sucks, right? I don't like milking, exactly. you know. I don't like when someone oh it's so beautiful, yeah. But I know that something is going on there that I it might be how to make it better because it will never be perfect. No matter how good you are, it will never be perfect. Right. So, so, um, just, just let me, let me do that, you know, better. And, and, and basically, you know, how I can improve that. So if, if you have a trusted person if, or friend, it's, he's gonna definitely point it out. Right. And this is, I guess, this is why, why I think you, you mentioned it's more important than the mentor, um, because uh, there is so much knowledge online these days. And of course, it might be overwhelming, but at the same time, there is all you need out there. Yeah, very, very well said. Uh, and I feel like nowadays with social media, it's hard to get uh, uh, really good feedback about your work. And uh, in the same time, people don't know your journey, mm -hmm. uh, where you are heading and where are you from like what are your struggles mm -hmm. and having those friends that see your journey uh, they can steer you to the direction that sometimes you don't see mm -hmm. uh, because you are fixated about one thing that doesn't really matter yeah you know yeah. Uh, I feel like it's super helpful um, and in the same time, there is so many uh, online schools. I mean, there is also focal point you, you heard about, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was actually trying to to get to that focal point, you know. Shameless marketing. <laughs> so good, good. good. <laughs> I I feel like with the focal point or any other physical school, it's it's great because you can make those connections and find those friends yeah. and yeah. and in the same time you can learn from from uh, really skilled people mm -hmm. uh, so it's like a double jump basically because you have the moral support of people like-minded people uh, and in the same time you have really great feedback from the from the instructors that's that's why i i really love the the dreamagine course back in the days when i was there 
because it was first time. I mean, in the high when I was in high school, I was the only kid that draw in the class. You know, like drawing in the back of the book and stuff. And I couldn't find uh, the like-minded people. And suddenly, a uh, few months later, I was surrounded by 40 people that have the same struggles, the same, uh, the same uh, mind. Uh, yeah. yeah. So so yeah, I feel like uh, mentors are are cool. Friends are better. <laughs> And schools with friends are best, you know? Yeah, physical yeah. aspect of things, right? When you right. basically surround yeah. surround yourself with, uh, like you said, like-minded people. I, I like how you broke it down in tears, you know? <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, no, uh, very, very well said. Of course, uh, the care from from the school itself is also uh, very important, right? You have, you have, of course, teachers that uh, you have to show care, you have to show that discipline, the motivation, the knowledge channeling, of course, when it comes to any kind of mentorship or school. And uh, yeah, that is, I think that is only really possible when you do it physically. In the, in the end, I believe people are like animals, right? We're, we're pack oriented. When yeah. you see someone working close to you, or you 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 look up to someone, you want to achieve the similar things. There's no other way to to be there physically with each other, like a group. I can, tremendous <laughs> progress. I can hear so, you. I've got the music in the background. Right now, now you can hear it, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think it, it means <laughs> it's time to wrap it up. Uh, Matthias, any 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 final conclusion? Any final advice? Uh, I mean, thank you so much for being with us. It was amazing to have you, man. Like thank to you. talk a little because yeah. normally when we meet, it's just like vodka and partying. It was amazing to talk to you in a more serious setting. Absolutely, and and yeah, like yes. hearing your uh, hearing your uh, experience and what you are up to. I think that was a great session. I guess we also, yeah, once in a while, if you are if you are down for that, we can we can do that more often. So definitely. Yeah, I I, I mean on my side, it was a pleasure to talk with you guys, and and yeah, totally, we can do this again. Uh, I feel like um, awesome. Uh, I yeah, I mm, the last thoughts I think would be. Uh, Hmm. I feel like the world need the world need uh, better people than uh, better artists. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, very well put. Um, beautiful words. <laughs> uh, I guess there is like so much knowledge that's been shared across those like uh, yeah more than ninety minutes already. So uh, we sort of extended. But you know when there's a good time. Time will time passes fast, so I guess uh, mm -hmm. for everyone who uh, who was watching us, please uh, share the knowledge about this um, um, this talk. Please uh, subscribe to our channel, of course, and go check out Matthias' works, support his stuff, and um, hit that like button. Yeah, exactly. And uh, okay. yeah, we gonna we gonna announce like an next session soon. Um, in the meantime, please all stay home. Please stay safe. And yes, yeah, speak soon, I guess. Yes. Again, thank you, thank Matthias. You guys. Thanks. Thanks, everyone, for watching, tuning in, asking questions. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. And uh, thanks yeah. till the next time. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matthias. Bye, guys. Have a good bye -bye. time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.